want to change how the fashion ecosystem works mm-hmm. or be the future of fashion manufacturing so in 5 10 years i think we want to be in a state where brands are not concerned about inventory losses closest and the real competition that we feel is the Ch- chinese gongsa wholesale market hello everyone we are here at the zayod gongsa office and we have mr ankit jaipuria co-founder of zayod hello ankit thank you for inviting us and giving us this opportunity to you know tell your story through our platform first of all my question is like how did you came up with this idea of creating zayod and like when did your journey begin so uh, a little background about myself i have been in the fashion industry since my childhood my grandparents parents they were in the textile business so i have seen this industry right from my childhood but personally i never planned to be in this industry but here i am surrounded by clothes so i went to engineering i did my engineering from iit delhi learned about supply chain my majors was in mechanical engineering so was close to the manufacturing part of it and then i was working as a management consultant and what i uh, realized was i got an opportunity to work at a fashion startup where i realized the whole uh, fashion ecosystem is very broken mm-hmm. i had seen uh, clothes being manufactured in a day i used to give my measurements in the morning by evening i used to get my shirts pants all of that and uh, when i came and saw this industry at the mass level i saw, saw it's taking more than 6 months from designs to delivery mm. and that was something which got me excited that i have to do something about the overall fashion manufacturing ecosystem it's still archaic like it used to run uh, 100 years back and now in the 21st century with technology in place why don't we sort of revamp the whole fashion manufacturing ecosystem and hence zayod was born in january 23 okay so what is the core business model of zayod and what inspired you just shared your family background what was your inspiration to start zayod so primarily if you would see the inspiration was uh to leave a mark in the overall world like how you get the world and how you leave it mm-hmm. so i think there are three major industries uh as i say roti kapda makan or mm-hmm. fashion shelter yeah. and food yeah. so fashion was something which was the most evergreen industry and it will everybody remain have to wear everybody clothes. has to wear clothes, clothes. so uh having my personal childhood background as well i was close to this industry mm-hmm. and i wanted to improve it when i saw that there are so much inefficiencies and there is so much that can be done and it has been done if you will look at manufacturing mm-hmm. of or architect or making buildings mm-hmm. you will see there are so many softwares you can build on cads and easily the construction work can happen there are multiple companies running and optimizing the food supply chain but fashion was still running like it was the stone age like the old school thing. so that that was something which got me real excited about doing something about it and that's how i have been uh grown up, uh, growing up as well if i find a problem just to solve it and this was a problem which i have I, which was close to me since childhood so what is the like core business model of zayo what does zayo basically so zayo technically is a tech enabled manufacturing platform what i mean by that uh, there are global fashion brands who require contract manufacturing to be done mm. so any brand that you would see would require third party manufacturers to uh, cl- uh, manufacture their clothes put on their labels and deliver it to the warehouse and then these brands sell it in the market mm. so what we do we help these fashion brands give them a one stop manufacturing solution and at the back end we basically on board sme manufacturers in the indian ecosystem who are anyway struggling with under utilized capacity or uh, under utilization of capacity in the market and we sort of build processes through our erp through our uh, 
technology where we standardize the design to delivery process mm -hmm. and through that we are able to give a one stop manufacturing solution to the brands so business model is very simple for a brand they give us uh, styles that we have to manufacture we get it manufactured the design is like this it's always a co creation we are a design to delivery partner okay. so they will give us the order mm -hmm. to produce bulk styles mm -hmm. could be ours could be a mix of co creation mm -hmm. and basis that we will manufacture it at the back end through the indian sme mm -hmm. manufacturing ecosystem and sell it so that's the model the uh, difference between the selling and the buying would be the margin that we would make so it's basically a b2b business it's a b2b, b2B business. it's a b2b business yeah. so how is it different from your like your competitors your like business model how is what are you doing different than your competitors so uh, i would uh, see as competition i would say the closest and the real competition that we feel is the Ch chinese gongsa wholesale market mm -hmm. so what was happening Uh, from a design to delivery perspective mm -hmm. china was one of the biggest uh, suppliers of garment over 40% was china's mm -hmm. share in the market india was about 2 3% okay. so given that uh, the chinese ecosystem had been built around giving more and more designs at a faster turnaround time with lower minimum order quantities gungzao one of the wholesale markets there was a sought after location internationally and brands used to go there to sort of get design inspirations launch styles whereas what happened post covid and especially after the rising e-commerce uh, that shift changed in not just in apparels but uh, in every other industry uh, people wanted to move out of china and india became one of the most sought after locations and the supply was not there in india to service that so uh technically that is the major competition that we see and what we have done uh differently with respect to all the players in the market mm -hmm. in the indian ecosystem mm -hmm. is going deep into the apparel manufacturing ecosystem mm -hmm. so we go deep at the grassroots level of manufacturing mm -hmm. not at the factory owners but the people who are designing the people who are cutting the people who are stitching the clothes and we have implemented a process through our in-house built erp where everything can be tracked through transparency we are giving them daily action plans so that the management uh, of the overall production cycle is done by us so in simple words we have become brains of manufacturing mm -hmm. we tell what has to be made how it has to be made when it has to be made and the factories become our execution arms so we have standardized the overall process just to give you an analogy let's say you go to a marriott hotel chain yeah. if you go to any marriott hotel everything is standardized mm -hmm. that's their process the check in experience how would they greet you that is what we have done in the apparel manufacturing ecosystem mm -hmm. in india okay. so uh, like what role does technology or rather i would say ai play in your like business model absolutely so see from a technology point of view mm. uh, there are three aspects to it how we have built the whole business mm. uh, first it was the whole industry was reactive because there was no single source of uh, communication platform single source of truth where all the information can come in place mm. the first step how we started was to get all of that together mm. so that was making the whole supply chain from being reactive to proactive mm. from that now we were getting enough data sets mm -hmm. to sort of make predictive uh, analytics what has to be done for example we had broken down the subjective styles mm -hmm. into objective attributes for example currently uh, a designer would tell okay this style would work for levis let's say but now basis data we have broken down that okay that style has collars mm -hmm. sleeve lengths color uh length of the shirt for example we can tell after two three iterations pink color with a v neck collar with full sleeves would be a hot thing in the market so that analytics is where ai comes into the picture and what we are uh in the lines of doing is having enough data to predict the overall operational time as well 
for a particular SKU or a particular operation, how much time it will take, uh, what would be the uh, quality parameters that needs to be taken care of. And this will uh, further improve the efficiency. Mm -hmm. And the last part that we would do is automation. Mm -hmm. So as we build this data systems, we'll also implement IoT. I can use my mechanical engineering background for that where uh, we can optimize the machines, feed in the data and why a human is required to stitch clothes when we can automate it through our CNC models, through our uh, inputs, which is backed by all the data that we have built so far. Okay, so like you are saying that AI helps like yeah. in predict predicting like what could be the next type rather than doing the tried and tested like that this would work and this would not work. Right. So, uh, if you would see what we have done mm -hmm. is made the whole supply chain very efficient mm -hmm. with respect to turnaround times, minimum order quantities and along with that making database insights on what's working. Mm -hmm. So, for example, uh, you launch something. Mm -hmm. So, if a brand was using a conventional supply chain, they were stuck with huge inventory losses because the minimum order quantities was 2000. Mm -hmm. We can do as low as 100, 200 pieces a style. And what that gives is a lot of flexibility for the brands to launch more designs because we come with a gamut of designs to them. We give them lower order quantities. Mm -hmm. And along with that, we can turn around designs to delivery mm -hmm. very fast. Mm -hmm. So that gives a growth loop for brands to launch more styles fast, mm. see what styles are working, mm. where we can also tell these attributes are working for you mm. and you can launch similar attributes in those styles. So for example, let's say black color with shimmer is working. Mm. So we can tell you can launch this style along with that you can launch similar styles which has black and shimmer in it. Mm. So that's how this whole loop sort of continues and brand sort of takes that growth journey with us. Okay, so you just talked about brands. So would you like to mention any particular brand which has like contributed in your journey till now, like the most the game changer brand kind of thing? So uh, the idea is our solution works for everyone and anyone. So how we started this business was with very small clients, mm -hmm. uh, D2C players across the market because we were the only solutions for them. Mm -hmm. But how we evolved, uh, e even enterprise brands started seeing value mm -hmm. in us because we were able to give that growth loop which we just discussed. Yeah. And if you name all the major brands, they would be working with us, be it a Reliance or a Landmark. You can name countless number of brands, all of us. Uh, all of them are customers like, to us. You are working with all of them, like Zara and very big brands or just the Reliance or like... So mostly all of them and eventually we'll, uh, our aim is to work for the overall. Oh. Every other garment should be made by Zyard. Okay. So how do you ensure seamless communication between manufacturers, brands and like the designers? That is like the key communication. It is difficult, right? manufacturers, brands, designers, they design one piece and you are the manufacturers basically the second part. How do you like maintain that seamless effect so that there's no miscommunication or something? So that's a good question. First of all, you uh, you would see that we have transi transitioned from just being a manufacturer mm. to becoming a design to delivery partner. And the reason for that is, see design is the most critical element to start off any a manufacturing discussion or any sales discussion for a brand as well mm. because that's the core product that you are working for and that was the gap in the market earlier where designs were uh, basically done in silos either the brands are doing that design by themselves mm. and then they are basically just uh, putting out, out their requirement in the market for it to be manufactured mm. what we realized the gap is there that's why we created this collaborative ecosystem where we would be creating designs, mm. we can get inputs from the market, from the brands and create those designs. And given that we are optimizing the whole manufacturing process uh, along those designs, mm. there is no uh, translation loss in conversion of that 
single design into bulk manufacturing mm. so that's what uh, one uh, key critical change that we have done rather than just focusing on uh, manufacturing the bulk products we have created this end to end design to delivery mm. ecosystem which further enables our efficiencies as well and also solves this problem of design being siloed across brands and manufacturers so you must deal with international brands yes right so how do you uh, like maintain the scalability and the logistics with international brands so if you would see the logistics so far has been very uh, hmm. simply solved because most of these brands they work on an fob model which is freight on board hmm. so our duty is to sort of uh, deliver to the uh, port which the brands want and then there are these ocean lines which sort of services them so logistics has not been a critical game changer mm. but the brands were struggling with this whole manufacturing management because it was labor driven it was not standardized because every sku has its own nitty gritties mm. and because of that uh, it was very difficult to set a standard process mm. and that's where the magic happens because sku's are not standardized it's it becomes more of an artistic field where margins are uncapped whereas the challenge is that you have to build processes which caters to different skus okay so what have been the biggest learning for you as a founder throughout your journey till now see i think uh, as a founder mm. what i realize is how uh, a company is made by team and my job in the company is to invest in the team to give them the platform give them opportunity and also be very agile to uh, new ideas so that the team collectively can bring out solutions and work towards that so uh, it's more on the lines of having more empathy mm. having an understanding and believing in the team so you that have you have learned that working with the team is important understanding them absolutely like what we have achieved in the last one one and a half years i would uh, say all of it goes to the team i was just the starting agent but okay. the rest is done by the rest is obviously done by the team but you are a one person yeah the team is like a com the a combined effort yeah. to make that possible so what are the challenges which you faced like while starting this brand and what challenges do you think a b2b owner faces while opening a business see first of all uh, whenever you are trying to do something which has not been done hmm. first there will be disbelief yeah. so the market was full of disbelief it could not be done hmm. how can technology change can you do such low order quantities can you do that fast can you do so many designs it can only be possible in china india is not up to the mark mm -hmm. so these were some statements which used to come uh, quite frequently mm -hmm. but how it has changed people started believing mm -hmm. so that sort of uh, gets easier as you grow mm -hmm. so the journey if i see mm -hmm. uh, is always difficult at the start of it any journey mm -hmm. uh, and more so over starting something new mm -hmm. and eventually people start believing in it and there is a small idea which is sown in the ground and it slowly becomes a plant and then eventually a big tree so that's what uh, my experience has been and specifically as a b2b uh, company see b2b businesses are very relationship driven businesses because uh, at the end there are people who are making decisions on uh, huge order or huge ticket sizes so there is a human touch that goes into uh, the b2b space in general so what uh, i have realized and what i would say to other b2b uh, founders and b2b like players would be i think customer centric approach is the most important in a b2b business okay. because at the end you are dealing with uh, someone who is taking those shots and who wants to understand so it's uh, primarily very important for folks to visit the customers quite frequently visit the stakeholders in our case beat the manufacturers beat the brands 
visit them, understand them and try to see what problems they are facing on a day to day basis mm -hmm. and how can you be someone who can improve their day to day lives. Okay. So are there any technological advancements you are planning to, you know, implement like in the uh, coming days you are planning to implement in your model or in, in your business? Absolutely. So as I said, there are few things that we are very excited about which we are working upon is uh, first creating designs just by data. Yeah. So that's something. So uh, we have enough data sets which recommends us what styles needs to be made. Mm -hmm. But what we imagine so it's primarily by three inputs one is the overall market analysis we have an in-house team of designers for that mm -hmm. second is primarily the uh, brand profiling that we do every brand that we onboard we will profile what this brands like let's say uh, what they have done in past so like what they have done in the past what price points mm -hmm. if they are a more gen z brand there will be more tacky clothes if there's a more modest brand mm -hmm. they will have a uh, higher sleeve a uh, higher neckline standardized. so standardization of some points and <coughs> um how we plan to sort of work on that is mm -hmm. but uh, not just give recommendations on styles but create styles out of that mm -hmm. and uh, as I said, also move in the uh, automation part where we can use automations, be it RFIDs, be it automated swing machines, be it your automated cutting. So that's something which we plan to do in the future to further make this whole supply chain efficient. So what are your plans like for the future? Five In five to ten years, where do you see Zio? And are there any plans for fundraising? So, uh, Zyod, see, uh, in one single line, if I would say, mm -hmm. we want to change how the fashion ecosystem works mm -hmm. or be the future of fashion manufacturing. So, in 5-10 years, I think we want to be in a state where brands are not concerned about inventory losses. Mm -hmm. They are in a state where inventory is not a problem, which is the biggest problem that the brands currently face. Mm -hmm. Second, uh, while doing that, we want to bring India to the forefront of the global supply chain ecosystem and uh, bring India as the forefront of a reliable manufacturing mm. partner in the global mm. apparel industry. So these are the two things if we are able to do, we would be uh, little satisfied with the milestone that mm. uh, we would have achieved. With respect to the fundraise, we uh, are in active conversations and probably in the future we would uh, be releasing out the happy news. Okay. So lastly, like what is the future of fashion in India and how does Zayot contribute to it? So uh, what I see as a future of fashion will be a C2M model, which is consumer to manufacturer. Mm -hmm. Every uh, consumer needs a different uh, cloth, a different style mm -hmm. to express themselves, to sort of uh, communicate. Mm. Fashion is a way of communication. Yeah. And what I see the future of fashion would be where brands or consumers would be getting customized clothes from Every brands would get customized clothes. In, in an instant. So they'll order, mm. uh, it will go to the manufacturer, the manufacturer will create that and it will be shipped to the consumer. So I think that's where I see mm. uh, fashion to evolve. Uh, customized clothing for everyone or a C2M model consumer to manufacture. Thank you so much.